Hey Tarot Tribe, are you guys looking for something a little bit more modern? Maybe a little bit East meets West? Then stick around, because today we're going to be checking out the Sasurai Bito deck. Hey Tarot Tribe, it's Dustin from A Modern Metaphysic Man, and today I thought we could hang out and go through the Sasarabito Tarot, which is um, a Japanese word for the Wanderer. So this is the Wanderer's Tarot. This is a deck that didn't really click with me at first, and it wasn't until Kelly Bear's recent video going through all of our favorite decks of 2018 that I really took the time to research it. And when I did, I really, really fell in love with it, so I got it. And I've had it for a couple weeks now, and um, yeah, it's it's a, an amazing deck. Um, so yeah, let's dive into this. The box comes into uh, it comes in a two-piece, really sturdy, hard case um, box. The top and bottom both say um, the Cesar Arbito, and then the sides have. Um, the deck name and the creator, Stasia, uh, Stasia Burrington, I believe is how you say that. I hope I'm not butchering that. <laughs> I apologize if I am. Um, and the back has this really nice design and it's got, you know, some, some foil on it, which is nice. When you open it up, on the inside it says uh, the Cesar Bito Tarot and has the website and this is printing three. So I believe this is the third time she's printed the fourth edition of this deck. Um, I'm not entirely sure, to be perfectly honest, but I believe that's what that means. <clears throat> um, she did send along a little thank you note. So hello there. Thank you for supporting um, independent art. Uh, Stasia Burrington lives in, works out of the home, out of her home studio in SeaTac, Washington. Um, with Nicholas and her two cats. And then it lists all of her information there, which is awesome. And she also gave a little business card, which is super cute. And then the book. So it does come with a little white book, which is nice. Um, it's just a really basic little white book. Nothing too mind blowing about it or crazy, but it has some good little information in there. So it's always nice to get the artist's perspective on the cards and why they depicted them the way that they did. Um, and then in the front here, it has a little uh, blurb about it. So it says, the 78 deck was inspired loosely by the Rider Waite deck, uh, contemporary living in the Pacific Northwest in Japanese and Buddhist ideas. <laughs> The Japanese word Sasarabito most closely translates to wanderer. It is an older literary term that has fallen out of use, meant to describe a person ever seeking, searching for a place of healing and refuge. This deck is designed to accompany the curious wandering court. Querent. Um, so yeah, it's just, it's a cool little concept for a deck, which I really love. Um, I have studied Japanese for about a year and a half now. Um, I love Japanese culture, art, things like that. So this was just right up my alley. <laughs> um, the inside of the bottom of the box has just this little moth um, art in it, which is nice. I always love when there's a little something in there. And then the deck itself is a uh, edge deck. So it's edged in this really nice gold. And the backs are really nice. They are fully reversible and they both have the death, these death moths and um, uh, femur bones, I believe that's what those are um, on them. So yeah, and the cards themselves are a standard tarot size. So this is um, the uh, Ancient Italian by Los Garabeo. So as you can see, it's just just a hair wider. Um, so they're pretty standard tarot sized cards. The cardstock is nice. It's um, probably about a 300 GSM. It does have a little bit of flex, 
both the front and the back um, are pretty glossy though. So if you don't like glossy decks, probably something you don't want to go for because they are pretty glossy. Um, the cards though are just absolutely beautiful. I don't mind the gloss. Um, so, you know, it's, it's one of those personal preferences. But the design of the cards is wonderful. So all of the artwork is done in this kind of a style. Each one has um, a frame and a border like this, which I really like. Um, it complements the card as well as the artwork. Um, so I really like the borders on this. So we have our Fool and our Magician, which follows more of the old traditional um, aspect of the, ma the Magician where he is sort of the uh, manipulator, right? Um, and here we have, you know, more of a traditional street magician, you know, doing the classic games of, of you know, find the, the ball under the cup or, you know, which card is, you know, um, the one you picked, which I think is a, is a really interesting take because you don't see that often anymore, especially in more contemporary decks. We have our High Priestess and our Empress. And there is a little bit of nudity in this deck, um, but it's very tastefully and artistically done. It's really beautiful. Um, and, you know, I think this sort of concept, especially for the Empress, um, works really well. And you can see, again, as she mentioned in the guidebook, there are several mods to the Red Lord Smith throughout this deck. We have our Emperor, which is much more of a, you know, that archetypal <clears throat> leader businessman in his business suit, which I think is an inter interesting take. Um, again, a little bit different. Our Hierophant. Our Lovers. I love this Lovers card. It's so beautiful. Our Chariot, which is just this rearing horse. Strength. The Hermit. Really awesome Hermit card. Wheel of Fortune. Justice. Our Hangman. Death. Temperance. <clears throat> I love this Temperance card and the fact that, you know, it's a man and <laughs> it's very modern, right? He's got like uh, a towel wrapped around his waist. It looks like he kind of maybe just got out of the shower and he's like making himself some tea or some coffee. I just think it's really great. It's, a, it's wonderful. The Devil. Really interesting depiction of the Devil being just the face of a man. Which kind of gives you that idea of like the devil inside of all of us, right? It's the every man. Um, you know, he is the every man. He is, you know, a part of all of us. And it's a constant battle to uh, move past him, right? Those, those temporal, those worldly addictions and, and things like that. Tower. Star, I love I love this little astronaut kind of floating around out here. The moon, the sun, and the, like the ability for her to render light, right, with you know her art style is just amazing. Look at this. I mean, you really get a sense of emotion and light and dark in both of these cards. Judgment in the world. And then we get into our cups. So Ace of Cups with maybe some green tea in it. Two of Cups. Three. And four. Interesting here that she's looking away from all of the cups, right? Not just the one that is right in front of her face. None of that is good enough for her. Five of cups. And 
six. Our seven of cups with all of our choices. There's a very interesting take on the Eight of Cups, right? The Eight of Cups is all about <clears throat> looking at what you've built and what you've grown, in the sense, her hair, and walking away from it, right? She's cutting her hair, which for some people, you know, their hair is part of their identity. Um, so, you know, it, this modern sort of take on this concept that's depicted here still really works well with the traditional RWS meaning of the card, which is just, it's really great. Nine. And ten. Very interesting ten of cups, right? Usually it's our happily ever after, you know. Um, you've got three people here camping around a campfire. Um, it's lots of cups around, so maybe they're having a party, and it was a great time. We have our court, so our page. Our knight, our queen, and our king. And I love that this deck is really inclusive, right? It shows people of all ages, of genders, of uh, body types, um, races. It's just, it's really well done. Two, and three. Four. <laughs> Holding those pentacles close. And five. Six. This is a really interesting card to me. Um, it took me a long time to sort of connect with this card because it is very non-traditional in the sense of the RWS deck. And, you know, it's, it's a, another great example, though, of how the imagery still speaks to the meanings in the RWS system, but they don't necessarily exactly reflect the imagery that we are, you know, so accustomed to uh, viewing when we look at tarot cards. So I'm going to quickly flip to this card in the book so you guys can get a sense of how she writes. <clears throat> um, Six of Pentacles, right? An exchange of some kind takes place on this card. It appears that some substance is being passed from the individual, from one individual's mouth to, mouth to another. You will you will either receive or be giving something of great value. The black line symbolizes this gift: money, knowledge, assistance, power. <clears throat> At first glance, it appears that the person on top is the giver and the person below the receiver. But this is this really the case? Teachers learn from students. This card is an uh, in invitation to question our assumptions about the appearance of balance. There is a subtle interplay between the giver and taker. Who are you in this equation? Be generous and be open to receiving great gifts of wisdom, time, and energy. Right? So again, like, still very traditional, but very modern. It's, it's just, it's really wonderful. Seven of Pentacles and our eight. Nine and ten. Page. Knight. Queen. And King. Two of swords, three of swords, right through her. And four, and I love depictions of four swords as meditation. Uh, I've talked about this in a, in a previous video, but you know, rest isn't always about just kind of laying down and chilling out, like active rest, purposeful rest, sitting down and thinking about resting, um, I just think is really wonderful. Five and our six, seven and eight, nine and ten, and then our page, our knight, 
queen and king. And then we get into our wands. So our ace and our two. Our three. And they are a little bit more pippish, right? A lot of these are. And four. Really building something, right? Building the cube. Um, so this isn't really a deck that I would recommend for beginners, but, you know, if you're familiar with RWS, um, this is a great intermediate deck to work with. Six and seven, eight and nine, ten, really great ten, right? You really get that sense of burden and feeling overwhelmed and the weight of the world is on you know this man's shoulders um it's a really great depiction and we have our page our knight our queen with our cats and our king so yeah that is the sasa burrito <laughs> or the sassy burrito, as a lot of people in the community call it, which it just cracks me up. Um, I love that name, but yeah, it's it's a wonderful deck. It fans really nicely, as you can see. It shuffles really well. Um, it you know it is a little bit of a slippery deck, um, but it you know it shuffles very well overhand. Um, I am a riffle shuffler, so you know it does shuffle really well when you riffle shuffle it. Um, so yeah, I hope you guys all enjoyed this. Um, as always, thank you so much for your support. You know, I have just recently launched my website, so if you haven't checked that out yet, be sure to check it out, um, www.modernmetaphysicman.com. Uh, I will be doing a live stream tomorrow morning at 9 a.m. Eastern, or sorry, Pacific Standard Time, which is noon, 12 noon Eastern Standard Time. Um, and we're going to be talking about some basics of astrology and things like that. So if you can check that out, make sure you do um, set a reminder and, you know, like, follow, subscribe, all that great stuff. Um, so, yeah, thank you guys. And as always, remember, everyone's fighting a battle that you know nothing about. So be kind always. Bye, guys.